I was trying to follow another bird there, but I'm still getting experience with this guy here. Sorry about the fast movement there. So our friends waited for us here. Sorry about this. I still have to find the way to get the camera on the bird, on the second bird that was flying there. Our first one is still waiting here for us so you can get some dice screenshots. This is another one above our heads, okay, a different one. I think this is a cormorant here in front of us. The sun is about to rise. It's good for the soul to be in a really beautiful spot like this. To take time. The glory of God dwelling in our land. That's our psalm today. The glory of God dwelling in our land. This bird is at peace here, doesn't want to take off, no nervousness. The glory of the Lord, oops, oh, I just missed it. I looked down and there she went over here. the under branches there. I looked away at the wrong moment. Now our little tree is bereft of the bird. There she is in there in the the very center of the screen now. I imagine you've been able to hear the lapping of the water here very gently. And there we have the sunrise. waiting for the children to come. To this beautiful spot.
the glory of the Lord dwelling in our land. So obviously we love to see beautiful gardens, beautiful scenery, beautiful houses, beautiful lawns. But this line from Psalm 89 has to be about our own hearts also. The glory of the Lord dwelling in our land. Because if the glory of the Lord is dwelling in the human heart, then of what the heart is full, the mouth will speak. And sometimes we have the sadness of corrupt hearts, corruption in the hearts. And we're made for the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord dwelling in our hearts, dwelling in our land. You know, we started the readings on Monday of chapter 5 of Matthew, up here at the Mount of Beatitudes, and we're still there, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, 6, and 7. So we're just in getting in halfway to chapter 5. And that started off with blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. God wants us to be filled with his goodness and happiness. The deep joy of God, the deep joy of justice, of purity, of a heart free, a heart free for his friendship and his gifts. By the way, there's going to be a solar eclipse today in the Northern Hemisphere. Somebody tipped me off yesterday about that. And 
it's not visible at all here because we just see a perfect sun disk. The glory of the Lord dwelling in our hearts. And you see, the opposite is very often the reality that we see people and we experience ourselves at times great sadness, great, great brokenness, terrible, painful brokenness. And we would say, where is the glory, you know? Like you come along to a beautiful beach like this and you see all this garbage here and you say, wow. Things that are broken, things that are not properly kept, things that are thrown away. And you come to another place and it's all beautiful, you know. So the human heart is also a venue, a location of much sadness and much brokenness and in a way glory seems more absent than present. And it's all about the heart, you know, because this wonderful teaching about deepening the law. The law says you shall not kill. Yesterday we were talking about the law a lot. And the law is in the context of life. This is one of the points from yesterday, you know. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. And today Jesus addresses this in a very concrete point then. The law says do not kill. And we're all in agreement. But he says we need more than that. We cannot be angry in our hearts. The transformation of our hearts, that's so essential. Glory dwelling in our land. Glory dwelling in our hearts. God's glory, God's, it's, it's his gift. It's his grace. But then obviously he wants our freedom to say, yes, I would love this gift, Lord. My heart has moments of, angry, of anger. There are moments I am very angry. And I have deep hostility in my heart towards somebody. And I want the glory of the Lord dwelling in my heart. This is what I really need. And this is what my neighbor needs. This is what my family needs. Because a person with an angry heart, it's not so easy to live with that person. It takes a lot of patience. In fact, maybe the neighbors of somebody with an angry heart have a lot of glory in their hearts because they need it. They need to live with a person who is very broken, very upset, takes uh, very big shoulders to carry that burden. And the beautiful thing is that every heart that's deeply broken can be deeply transformed. And that's God's plan with us to make a new creation. We have the new morning each morning, announcing that God, the Creator, is faithful. And God wants the sun to rise in our hearts again. No question about it. Absolutely no question about it. The glory of God dwelling in our land. Especially in our hearts. How wonderful it is to see siblings come to peace again after a deep quarrel. And tensions and conflicts are part of growing up because it's difficult for us to adjust to personalities developing, to a fair 
separation, a fair division of responsibilities, of resources. That's all challenging. So con conflicts and tensions are part and parcel of that development. But then when the actions can become very hurtful, words can become very hurtful and there are deep-seated divisions and brokenness. And they can fester for a long time if they're not properly treated like a bad wound. Glory dwelling in our land, glory in our hearts. Imagine all the families living in those high rises there in Tiberias. And it's just one city in the world, so many cities, your city, the city near you. And you want to pray for the glory in each heart in each of those buildings. What a beautiful way to drive along a road and to offer up a prayer and a thought for blessing for the people driving on the other side or overtaking you or in front of you on the road. Glory dwelling in our land. Imagine people like that on the road with a heart like that. Obviously, greed can be one of the causes of anger because I want so many things and the other person has it and I'm angry, I'm upset because they took advantage of this opportunity before I got it and now I can't stand that. And I'm angry, I'm upset. And even division over little things like this can lead to people not talking to each other, even siblings. Anger. And God's glory dwelling in our land. Transformation of my heart, deep down. It's not enough that I just don't kill that person, God forbid, you know. It's the transformation of my heart so God's glory can live in me. Paul's letter is also very beautiful. It's in sync there. And he's talking a lot about glory. In fact, I remember right yesterday's reading was also in that direction or another reading earlier the day before. And the glory unveiled faces, you know. Like Moses' face when he met God was radiant. It was too much for the people, so he had a veil over his face. And Paul works with this thought so beautifully. With the, as the revelation grew to its plenitude in Jesus, then the glory is, is extraordinary. And there actually, you know, we could bring it to a climax in the martyrs. The martyrs are really extraordinary people because God's glory is shining in their lives. Okay, they're being destroyed by some people who don't like them, who want to wipe them off the face of the earth, but God's glory is precisely living in those martyrs. And they're dying under severe violence and total injustice, and yet they're dying in peace they're praying for their enemies. And where you'd normally anticipate anger and a desire for revenge to crush our enemies. The language that's pretty frequent, in, especially in the Hebrew scriptures, 
because revelation is coming little by little. So the first experience is God is with me. So I'm going to thrive and succeed over and above my enemies and I will wipe out my enemies and I will have total charge. But as, as revelation grows, the human heart perceives that it's not really about holding on to things and properties. It's about the glory of the Lord shining in our hearts. We, being transformed deeply from glory into glory. So may this sunrise today be an inspiration for the beauty that God wants to accomplish in your hearts, which is much more than the sunrise. It's for eternal glory. And that's where we're headed. That's the transformation that's being gifted to us. The glory of God dwelling in our land. So people, I think this was really a nice moment for this morning. We were blessed with this uh, beauty. And now this camera is behaving a little better, or at least I'm behaving a little better. <laughs> I'm learning how to use it little by little. Thank you very much. God bless you. See you later, alligators.